Then we can talk about the active transport side of cellular transport. And in active transport, the important thing to distinguish is that we're moving from low concentration to high concentration, right? Um, in this case, we're moving against the concentration gradient. So against the concentration and gradient. We're moving uphill, um, which if you think about it, you're moving uphill and you're pushing against the concentration gradient. It is obviously going to require energy to get that movement done. Um, and the reason for this movement against the concentration gradient, um, instead of just letting things move with the flow, is because in some cases, a disequilibrium is necessary to maintain homeostasis, which probably sounds kind of weird, but actually sometimes homeostasis, all right, a uh, stable internal environment, is dependent on the idea of some molecules not being at equilibrium, that the, they actually are uneven in certain areas. Um, for example, sugars, amino acids, sodium ions, potassium ions, and such. So a perfect example of this active transport is the sodium-potassium pump. All right, pumps, you should know, are going to be um, a protein that's embedded in the cell membrane. And that protein, like it says, is going to pump molecules against the concentration gradient. Um, so what it's actually going to be doing is it's going to move a 3 to 2 ratio. So it's actually going to force three sodium ions out um, and when those three sodium ions move out, as we can see, the ATP, right, that energy, is going to be actually utilized, right? We break that bond between one phosphate molecule and the adenosine diphosphate is what we're left with. So we've got that unenergized version of the molecule once it's, the energy has been used. And we have those three sodium ions that move out of the cell, while at the same time we have two potassium molecules that are going to actually move in, and those potassium atoms, when they move in, while the energy is still being utilized, they're going to move into the cell. Now, the thing to keep in mind is that we're actually moving against the concentration gradient, which means, in this case, we have tons and tons of sodium ions out here. All right, sodium is really all over the place. And the obvious thing to happen would be for sodium to move into the cell. But because this is a pump, it's moving it against the concentration gradient. It's moving to an area that's already concentrated, forcing move more into an already crowded area. Likewise, the same is true of the potassium. Potassium inside the cell is already very high in concentration. And the typical thing to expect is that that potassium would move out. But again, like I said, it's a pump. So it's forcing more potassium into an already crowded area, right? Then we have a process called endocytosis. And we should come to mind, endo, enter, right? Endocytosis, cyto, cell, osis process, it's a cellular process entering, right, in. Um, this is actually going to be engulfing a substance and forming a vesicle around it. Um, this is going to be for cells that are too big for diffusion, too big for active transport. They're going to be too big for diffusion, facilitated diffusion, active transport. Um, by active transport, I mean like pumps. They're really, when it comes down to it, these are going to be molecules that are just substantially um, too large to be moved in any other way. And we have three types of endocytosis. We've got pinocytosis, phagocytosis, and receptor-mediated endocytosis, which we'll go into. If we look at pinocytosis, all right, pino, what we're talking about, is liquid. Um, oftentimes, what the liquid is is obviously going to be mostly water, like majority of things within your body. So what happens is that the fluid moves towards that cell membrane, and the cell membrane starts to kind of dimple in, and as it dimples in, it starts to kind of form this vesicle until the vesicle pinches off, and that vesicle is going to, right, close in and move toward, move into the cell. Um, many times, right, that vesicle is going to need to be broken down if it's non-liquid. Uh, in that case, it would be phagocytosis. 
All right, phagocytosis is going to be movement of solids in. So again, we have this solid particle that moves towards the cell membrane. The cell membrane dimples in, pinches in, boom, vesicle. Um, oftentimes, at this point, it's going to join a lysosome. And that vesicle is going to join the lysosome so that the lysosome can break down whatever this particular particle is um, once it's inside the cell. And then we have this receptor, receptor mediated endocytosis. And this is the very, very similar idea to penocytosis and phagocytosis, but the difference is, is that in this case you have these receptors that kind of control the endocytosis because there are only specific molecules that will fit within that receptor site. And once they fit into that receptor site, then the vesicle can begin to form. We're not just forming a vesicle over around whatever wants to come in. It's specific to whatever these molecules are that fit the receptor. So again, in receptor-mediated endocytosis at this point, it's going to join a lysosome typically because then it's going to need to be broken down whatever this particular mo molecule is. We also have, similar to endocytosis, or actually kind of the exocytosis, the opposite of endocytosis, um, exocytosis is going to be exiting the cell, so reverse of endocytosis. Um, this is when a substance that's in a vesicle actually joins the cell membrane and gets released out. So in this case, if we look over here, um, we have a vesicle, and that vesicle all right, is coming from the Golgi apparatus, right? And it is being pushed towards the cell membrane where it's going to join and become a part of the cell membrane, where it's going to start to just open up until it actually releases everything and becomes continuous with the cell membrane. So. Um, this is a really good example of exocytosis. Um, removal of waste obviously is an easy one, but release of neurotransmitters between nerves. The idea that this neuron, the cell body, the neural message travels down the axon and it travels down to the ends, the terminal ends of the nerve. And at this point, what you're actually going to have are neurotransmitters that are sealed in vesicles that are going to join with the cell membrane, be released out at that synaptic junction, that space, synaptic cleft, and the neurotransmitters are going to be able to bond and join the receptor molecules on the following nerve. Then we have something called transcytosis, and transcytosis is probably the one that's least familiar to you. This is basically endocytosis immediately followed by exocytosis. So really what we're talking about is in and out. All right, it's just a quick movement. It's coming into the cell and it's going back out of the cell. Um, it's rapid transport from one end of the cell to the other and this is how substances can cross barriers formed by tightly connected cells. Um, how molecules can or how substances can kind of get in or get between cells really really quickly flow between cells for example the hiv um, virus is actually going to use transcytosis to be able to move into one cell out of that cell and into the neighboring cells very very quickly um, for its transmission so as we can see here we have white blood cells that have been infected with hiv um, and those little molecules, these little viruses, are actually going to be able to get out and they're actually going to come in through endocytosis, pass through um, epithelial cells, and they're actually going to be able to transfer into the cells on the other side of the lining. Um, so the idea of how, um, I want you to pay attention to the idea of like, trans this is the idea of transmission, that the infected cells enter your body and then they're able to actually pass right through the lining of those organs, um, the lining and into your own bloodstream where they can infect your cells. This pretty much wraps it up for our lesson on cellular transport. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to see me.